And we'd find out we was crying for something so small in the flesh, in the natural. Did you ever read about Paul and all the beatings and all the whippings and all the stuff in Second Corinthians? He's talking about being persecuted, struck down, not destroyed. He's, the whole list is there. And he says all these things are a brief moment of light affliction when they're compared to the eternal weight of his glory when he comes. When I look at Paul's list, many of us fell apart for less than one thing on his list. Be real with me. He's got a whole list. Less than one thing on his list. We've fallen apart and done backslid, gave up on prayer, and don't even know if we can believe anymore. <laughs> And it's just all about us and what we're going through and how we feel. <laughs> and Paul said, whoa, whoa, whoa. These are brief moments of light affliction. See, if we don't see that way, we won't see our life as a vapor and a, just coming here today and going tomorrow. We'll, we'll, we won't redeem time. We'll just take for granted and, and we'll just, yeah. I wonder if you actually have that urgency in you and realize life is skating by. Ten years is like a... Right? Some of us, we've been through three dogs already, you know. <laughs> I'm just saying. You know how it is. I don't care how young and how old you are. You know what I'm saying. Because even if you're young, you ain't as young as you were and time's floating. It wasn't long ago you couldn't wait till you was a teenager. And then you're like 16, and then you're like 18. I'm an adult. Some of us wanted to be 21 for the wrong reason. But after 21, there ain't no goal. Now you're like 25 going, ah! You're 30, and you, don't, you can't stop the train. You're looking in the mirror sideways. You're 30. You're like, that's going to hit me soon. <laughs> Life's floating, ain't it? So we ought to redeem the time. The days are evil. Life's a wisp and a vapor. Brief moments, light affliction. Brief moments, light affliction. This has been going on for months. Brief moments of light affliction. Are you with me? Faith understands this stuff. Selflessness really understands it. You can't get tricked back into a self-centered focus. You've got to be a kingdom-minded person. You've got to think for the kingdom even in the midst of trial. You've got to think for the kingdom so you manifest the kingdom in the trial. If you don't think for the kingdom in the trial, you'll just manifest your feelings, your displeasure, your uncertainty, your fear. Are you all with me? Why am I getting into all that? Because without this relationship he's talking about, oh, without this relationship he's talking about, it's a guarantee that you'll grow weary and well-doing. It's a guarantee that somebody's going to get under your skin because you won't have new skin. But with relationship, you're transformed. As you start seeing him for who he is, and you start really taking that in and seeing Jesus for walking in love and mercy and forgiveness, hanging on the cross, beaten beyond description. Guys, this isn't just a picture in the end of an Easter movie. This is like really Jesus, the Son of God, and he's beat beyond description. Men did that to him. And of those men, he said, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. That has not been our response just when we're not treated fair. We're just not treated fair. And we got to let somebody know just what they did to me and give all the facts so I can get a reaction that supports my emotion. Come on, be straight and be real with me. And, and Jesus is hanging there, beat beyond description. Forgive them, Father. They don't know what they're doing. What's he saying? If they really saw, if they really knew, if they really understood, they wouldn't be doing what they're doing. That revelation alone would change them. So what's he saying? Seeing will change you. When you get alone 
and you're with the Lord and you believe you love just sitting on the edge of your bed in the morning before you take off and go get ready for work or whatever making sure your attitude is clean and clear that you're thankful and not just dreading because six came so early and now I got a rush and oh I got that meeting and oh my goodness I got a oh, and now you got yourself all ready and then you're saying God you're going to have to get me through this day and you call that prayer <laughs> come on that's just self-conscious, self-focused whirlwinds. It's all about you and your day, and you're adding spiritual language to it to make yourself feel Christian. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> no, I'm talking about just sitting on the edge of your bed and just believing God's love for you, understanding why you're alive in the first place, that mercy woke you up to give you another day to shine, to be more like Him, to walk in love, to show mercy, to make peace. Blessed are the peacemakers, not the issue driven. Blessed are the peacemakers, not the ones determined to be shown right. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. See, it's not a confession, it's an expression. 